secondly, total derivative. dc by dt. Is this the same as that? They're not. Mathematically, they're not. Okay? Mathematically, it means If x, y, and z are independent variables from time, you can write down total derivative of c as this equation combined. All right? And since x and t are independent, I'm going to group them. All of this, physically, it means the change in position with respect to time. And these changes are, I mean, are not restricted. You can change it freely, okay? So physically, if you have river flowing in this direction, it means that it means that at this time for for the location to be changed freely, it means your observer stands in the boat and look at fixed position from the boat itself. And then the boat can cruise in any direction at any speed. Okay? You look at fixed position from the, the boat itself, but the boat itself can move. Do you think this person and that person would see the same thing? No. Totally different. That means writing Total differentiation and partial differentiation would give you different result. Okay? Last one is called substantial derivative. This one, you have not seen it before. It is capital D. Capital D by dt, okay? By definition, substantial derivative looks like this. Now, Vx, Vy, and Vc may look similar to dx by dt, dy by dc, and dz by dt, but they are different. Here, x, y, and z are independent from t. That means observer can move independently. Okay? But here, velocity Vx, Vy, and Vc our velocity of the fluid. This would be fluid velocity. So now it means that the observer in this case still is still moving. But the movement 
of the observer is restricted by movement of the fluid. Observer must, must be moved along with the fluid. So it looks like this. If you have river, okay? Now, my observer here stands on a raft. You know a raft? A piece of wood that fl is floating on the water. The velocity of the raft here is supposed to be equal to velocity of the river. So it's determined by velocity of the river. Right now, my observer looks at the same position from the raft all the time. So do you think these people, this person would see anything? Suppose I have some red dyes pouring here. Will he, will he see anything? When this paint here is carried by the stream, this person will be carried by the stream as well. So it means that right now, these two are relatively moving at the same speed, right? It means that he will not see convection part of this transfer. Remember, mass transport or any transport phenomena is consisting of molecular part and convective part. In convective part, it moves along the velocity of the fluid. So as long as our observer moves along with the same speed as the fluid, he will never see convection part, right? So this person will see only molecular part. He will see diffusion. Imagine if you have a bigger here, you put a red paint in there, all the water here does not move. So what would you see? There'll be a disperse of the paint outward according to diffusion, right? And diffusion here is a part of molecular transport of mass. At this point, the convective part is zero because the fluid is stationary. If you stand out and look into this part, your velocity is zero as well. So that means you have the same velocity as the fluid. So what, what you see would be only the molecular uh, diffusion part or molecular transport part. So suppose this one is moving like if it is located on top of a car. So fluid is moving, right? If you stand on top of the car as well, you will see this one, just a dispersed part because you move at the same speed. But if you stand outside on the road and this one, this car moving passing you. Now you will not see this picture. You will see convective part in addition to the diffusion part. So if you want to eliminate convective part, you need to move at the same speed as the fluid. That will be represented by substantial derivative. Understand? Here can be derived further. Now, these three terms combined looks just like a product of two vectors dotted together. Like this. Because del C 
is partial differential of c with respect to x, y, and z. If you dot it with velocity component vx, vy, and c, you get this equation. So this equation can be reduced to this part. Okay. So now sometimes people say substantial derivative of anything with respect to time equal to partial differential, partial derivative of that entities with respect to time plus v dot del of that. So this one can be replaced by anything. Later on, we can replace it with velocity, with concentration, or even energy. Now, in chapter three, um, in, in chapter two, we can find the velocity profile from the shell balance. However, in chapter two, if you set up the shell incorrectly, you screw, right? Everything will be incorrect. So the answer really depends on how you set up the shell. The shape of the shell, the looks of the shells, really determine the answer. And that's inconvenient. So, I, I gave you an example last week. If I use the shell, that is the most common shell, which is a cube like this, for rectangular coordinate. This kind of cube can be integrated three-dimensionally and you will end up with the answer, the correct answer always. However, by doing that, you need to integrate it three times. But it ensures that the errors from set up, setting up the shell incorrectly can be avoided. Okay? So in chapter three, we will try to develop a set of equations that can be applied to any kind of problems without doing shell balance. And simply use that equation all the time. You can get the answer. Okay? Now, there are, this kind of equation sometimes is called equation of change because it represents the change in anything with respect to position. Right? Now, to derive the first one, the first one here, 